You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out a praise, pour out a praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out a praise to you, oh. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. your breath in our lungs, so we pour out a praise, pour out a praise, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out a praise to you only, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out a praise. will cry, his bones will sing, great are you, Lord, all the earth will shout your praise, our hearts will cry, his bones will sing, great are you,
It's your breath and our lives. So we pour out a praise, pour out a praise. It's your breath and our lives. So we pour out a praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. For it is by His grace we have been saved. It is by His grace that we stand. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I found I was blind but now I see it was grace that taught my heart to feel Grace, my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear? The hour I first believed. Through any dangers, toils, and snares. Have already come. This grace had brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good. Word my hope secures He will my sheep and portion be as long as life and the earth shall soon dissolve like snow. Sun forbid to shine, but God call me below will be forever mine. Amazing grace, how sweet. A wretch like me, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now I'm found was blind but now I see
Shabbat Shalom and warmly welcome you to the worship room. Hallelujah and I hope that you've been having a blessed, blessed day wherever you are right now in the vicinity of your homes joining in the live worship room. I warmly welcome you and uh, say Shabbat Shalom. Blessed day to you. I thank Hashem. I thank God for another day given to you and I. As the Passover has begun, God gives us another promise to us today. In the book of Psalms 91, 6, it says, Nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plagues that destroy at midday, shall enter your dwelling. Hallelujah. So, you know, as I always prepare, whether it be to worship or whether it be to share anything in word, it's not just gathering something and documenting something down, but in this season, in the past seasons, there have been many a time where I've really been able to just spend time in prayer, spend time soaking and understanding, because, you know, as believers, we go through seasons, you know, whether we've been whether we, we were growing up, whether you went to Sunday school, whether you went to Bible college, whether you went to Bible school, whether you went Sunday after Sunday after church, you've been hearing the word being spoken, you've been hearing the word being taught. But through the generations, through the seasons as it goes by, what do we do with it? Do we just allow it to fall short? the moment we leave a place or do we carry the word wherever we go for me every opportunity I get I thank God that he has always been my salvation he's always been my redeemer he has always been he has always been with me he has always been there for me he's never let me down he has never ever let me go I know that for sure and especially when times have been really tough in life I know that I could always cling on to him because he always has me covered and carried me. And today, as I share something with you with regard to even this very season, even this time where many gathered usually, I know that everyone's locked up in isolation or quarantine, and this is a time where for the Jewish people it is celebrated as Passover but through the seasons over the generations in life just like in many many uh, celebrations when it even comes to Christmas the time of Christmas is now celebrated more or less by everyone and anyone I see Christmas trees I see festivities it's become another festival but without really understanding same like for the Passover For many they call it Easter and without really understanding what what is what took place what is to take place what should be done Uh, for many it will be celebrating usually with uh, Easter eggs Easter bunnies a time where the kids would be enjoying chocolate just like the adult kids and you know uh, but we need to understand not to put that down but we need to take it really seriously because we need to come to understand what Passover really is and without understanding it just becomes tradition it just becomes a festival it just becomes just another thing that we do but for all those who believe in God's Word just as much as the Jewish people take it so seriously we as the body of Christ we need to really understand that Christ died for us He gave up his life for us, for something. It's not just to be able to talk about it as part of history. It's not just about talking about it as a historical story to the kids or teach something to the Sunday school kids in church. No, as part of church, we need to understand that many things have been diluted in this season of life where Many aren't seeking answers to understand why we do certain things, why we believe what we believe, you see. We need to come to understand what it is, to know why we do these things, why we celebrate and why we remember. Because 
Christ paid an ultimate price and I don't think that he paid that ultimate price for us to just remember it on a one off occasion and then just forget about it the rest of the day so I want to just go through what God's word clearly says and to be able to reveal to you what the Holy Spirit is also going to reveal to you because I pray that you won't be just focused on sounds my voice but I love the Holy Spirit to minister and speak to you in this time so as we gather across the nations from the worship room I want to say shalom may his peace always be with you and may he strengthen you every time day and night as you go deep into the word and spend time even in this time when we are locked up and many are wondering what to do I would encourage even the believers to spend time in God's word there is nothing more satisfying than to spend time in his word and to spend time in his presence hallelujah i just want to pray as before i share this i father lord i thank you father lord for your love i thank you jesus that you are at the center of all things and i pray that the holy spirit that your holy spirit will strengthen us every day it's not just sharing of your word father but we want to come to deep understanding of your word in everything that we do and in this time I surrender it into your hands father so that you will speak you will speak father lord that we will be attentive to understand and we will receive all the things that you have for us father so that you will open the eyes of our hearts to truly stand for your word father in the mighty matchless and precious name of yeshua hamashiach jesus christ of nazareth amen Amen. Hallelujah. See, I want you to understand that as we go through Passover this very season, Passover started yesterday, and as we go through Passover, understand that in Jewish culture and for the Jews, in Yiddish it says matzo, in Hebrew it's matza, um, and uh, matzot. in the plural is an unleavened flat bread that is part of jewish cuisine and forms an integral element of the passover festival hallelujah also placed on the table are three pieces of matza a cracker like unleavened bread that represents the bread the israelites took with them when they fled egypt so they didn't have time to uh, carry much with them they carried this flat bread and salt water to represent the tears of the slaves understand for us believers in christ children of the living god together understand that we no longer are slaves to fear just as the israelites were brought out of redemption keep our trust in our lord our god who is our protector through this very season we are in keep our eyes on jesus no one else keep our eyes focused on the lord's word and i love the holy spirit to be the teacher the lord left us to be able to reveal to us spiritual truth to share with the world no one else keep our eyes on your heavenly father let's keep our eyes on our heavenly father and to be able to constantly discern to the holy spirit that jesus left us see passover is a beautiful and powerful picture of god's plan for salvation and just as the people of israel were starting over this was now going to be the beginning of their year So too with us when we come to salvation through the lamb of God Jesus Christ we start over as well In the second book of Corinthians chapter 5:17 it says therefore if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation the old has passed away behold the new has come Hallelujah hallelujah See I want us to understand that um, in this time as we go go into celebrating the passover jesus is our passover lamb 
and as we study the original passover we learn how we can experience jesus more deeply and personally in our lives today the life of jesus in the gospel of luke reveals to us that to see jesus as our savior healer baptizer in the holy spirit and soon and com- soon coming king we have also seen him as the day spring who brings hope the friend of sinners the good teacher the prince of peace the mighty deliverer the lord our provider he provides every good thing to all of his children and the god who answers prayer prayer that we pray truly believing trusting in what god's word clearly says and as we tap into all of god's plans and purposes and when we start to pray exactly as god wanted us rather than just praying half-hearted prayers and just prayers for anything and everything we need to understand when we mature in as the part of the body of christ we need to understand what it is that we are seeking in this life what it is that we are to come to terms to understand when we realize who we are through Christ Jesus what does he want from us what is it that he wants from us because he didn't just come to this earth teach us and pave a way for us teach us a certain way to live and then reveal to us that he will return one day give us his word and then just leave wanting us to just flow through life go through the generations play life as it is just like you know like in a you know one of these ferris wheels one of these merry go rounds that just goes round and round and round and we just play life and just go through life and just flow with it see we need to understand that our life has far more deeper greater meaning than just doing the day to day things that we've been doing our life has so much more meaning than that we need to understand that constantly we need to turn from the life and teachings of jesus to understand that passover season most of the disciples even though they've been walking with christ they've been watching him do many miracles they've been witnessing as he taught preached to the masses and individuals as well along the way but to most of them they could not fathom to understand that here the messiah was going to sacrifice his life there were so many signals given but they wouldn't have fathom to understand what was taking place even when it came to the last supper for them it would have just been you know just to partake in another meal but jesus was doing something so significant just the other day on sunday when we partook in communion in the lord's table i was saying that before jesus broke bread and uh drank from the cup he did something so much more significant than that it amazed the disciples when jesus actually literally got on his knees literally got on his knees and started to wash the feet of the disciples that would have just shocked them so much it would have just shocked them so much where they would have just been wondering what's going on here but he did something so significant to literally tell the people that were that were serving with him that were walking with him to say that i did not come here to be served but to serve jesus literally taught, was teaching them even at an hour like that knowing that he was going to be betrayed in a very short while he was still ready to serve at the lowest form but he was ready to humbly serve and to be able to leave the disciples with the thought to let them know that in this life no matter what continue to serve humbly continue to do things 
with a joyful heart because sometimes you know when we do things we tend not to really understand what it's all about because we tend to be striving from level to level wanting to achieve we are in a world we have been in a world which has been constantly developing we've seen so much of technology over the years we've seen so much of growth we've seen so much at an unprecedented level increasing and increasing and increasing and man even though disasters have come many things have come to affect and yet people just tend to just keep moving on and they keep moving on and they keep moving on and they forget they forget so many things and today we are in a season where everything has been brought to a standstill the entire world is at a shutdown some might say oh no but the greater corporations are still functioning the main 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 areas are still running trust me it's not it's nowhere in operational level the entire world has been brought to a shutdown and beyond it all there's something significant happening and i want you to know that god has not abandoned his people in this time and god is calling out see when 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 the israelites were in born in they were they were they were slaves for generations in egypt and there were so many things that they were going through and when they felt that there was no way out god in his time used a significant man who never thought that he could do it but god used him but god was ready in his time to bring them all out see sometimes people tend to give up hope when things that don't happen their own way or in their time in this season i want to encourage you even as i'm sharing in this i know it's tough and it is difficult but don't give up hope don't give up hope hallelujah see as we study the original passover we learn how we can experience jesus more deeply and personally in our lives today see a background to the story comes from the book of exodus the second book in the bible from verses 1 to sorry from verse uh, from chapter 1 to 11 i beg your pardon the children of israel were slaves in egypt and they cried out to the lord for deliverance much like in this time there are many people crying out looking for answers god raised up moses to be their deliverer and went to pharaoh and performed ten mighty signs which we know as plagues which we have seen even in recent times the tenth being the death of the firstborn in the old testament is full of shadows and types that point to of the person of jesus christ see the passover represents the beginning of new life see now the lord spoke to moses and aaron in the land of egypt saying this month shall be your beginning of months it shall be the first month of the year to you exodus 12:1 to 2 says the lord said to moses and aaron in the land of egypt this month shall be for you the beginning of months when you become a christian you begin a new life in christ see my new life began in a time where even as a youngster many people when i always testify this try to figure out how can that be but i tell you that my new life began in 1984 i was a 6 year old and i was constantly hearing this audible voice and i was not born a christian but god knew me just like he knows every single one of his creation every single one of us are created by god almighty and 
he was calling me out i did not come to christ through anyone else i didn't come to jesus through a synagogue a church no anyone else god was calling me out see god see to many of you i will tell you whether you were brought to a building where the church gathered or whether you were brought to a bible study or someone shared the gospel of our lord with you which will be amazing know that in finding christ know the picture that is being painted it's like the prodigal son returning to his father who had been patiently waiting all this time with his arms wide open waiting to love on you waiting without rejection to say i warned you i told you so no instead to be able to embrace you with wide and open arms never wanting you to perish just like god did not want this earth to perish hence he sent down his only begotten son to be sacrificed for our sins for the sins and transgressions of this world but there was a process just like there was a process prior to the exodus of the israelites exiting and being set free god warned pharaoh and wanted moses to go warn them and like it is in such times jesus came to not just teach but he taught preached giving us a clear cut guided path to walk to choose right from wrong to choose biblical truth over false teachings to be in discernment and when he was to leave he did not abandon but he left the greatest and only helper we could ever need he already knew what we needed he already knew see at that time when the disciples gathered with jesus in the upper room he was teaching them something so significant right around as they gathered around and as they sat on the ground around that table he was teaching them something so significant in breaking that bread he was teaching them although they would some of them wouldn't have understood because for them they would have been in confusion trying to figure out some of them actually it is written in the bible were trying to figure out as to who was greater than the other you know with all the teachings understand that in this journey we meet so many people in this walk of life as parts of family friends relatives so on and so forth but understand our life significance is not to figure out as to who is doing better than the other but it has actually to be there for one another to be able to be encouragers over discouragement to be able to bring hope see christ brought christ was that hope and christ wanted us to be vessels so that he could always reveal that very hope through us to each other to be able to reveal it to one another to be able to encourage one another to be able to always point the direction to him not to us because the glory always 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 goes to god he was not abandoning the disciples when he was teaching these things he did not abandon but he left the greatest and only help that they could have ever needed that was the holy spirit to be able to guide to be able to be able to guide along this life's journey till he returns one day the return of the king see with the greatest sacrifice that he was about to make which is the death of the lamb he was going to secure our salvation many wouldn't have understood it and to this day with all the teachings with all the attending of seminars and programs which all of these things have come to a standstill and have ended with all of the teachings over the years do you truly understand it do you truly stand by faith to believe it see in the bible it says 
on the tenth day of this month every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father a lamb for a household and if the household is too small for the lamb let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons according to each man's need you shall make your count for the lamb your lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year you may take it from the sheep or from the goats now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight and they shall take some blood and put it on the doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat it Exodus 12:3 to 7 See why did God tell them to sacrifice the lamb It says in the Bible in the book of Exodus For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment I am the Lord your God now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are and when i see the blood i will pass over you and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when i strike the land of egypt verses 12 13 the lord was coming through the land to execute judgment for those who killed a lamb and put the blood on their doorposts would be saved the next day john saw jesus coming towards him and said Behold the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world it says in John 1:29 In the book of Hebrews 9:22 it says and according to the law almost all things are purified with blood and without shedding of blood there is no remission See the bible truth is so see this bible truth is so important for us to understand because of our sins we deserve to die with so many shortcomings we 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 constantly keep getting entangled in things in this world but but for us we need to know that Jesus died not just some death but he died in our place as our substitute so our sins could be forgiven Charles Spurgeon Charles Spurgeon said in one of his sermons we must preach Christ crucified whatever else that we do not preach substitution seems to me to be the soul of the gospel the life of the gospel the essence of the gospel therefore must it ever be in the front Jesus as the lamb of god is the alpha and we must keep him first and before all things before all others i charge you christian people do not make this a secondary doctrine the center of christianity is the cross and the meaning of the cross is substitution see the blood of sprinkling and the children today many things get watered down especially the bible god's word to that of one's own understanding of it instead of reaching it not to give one's own flavor but to know that we preach and teach the exact words of our lord and savior and to teach all of what's in god's word the lord does does the transformation in our hearts the lord is the one who does the transformation in the ones who listen and the ones that receive and not us for our salvation comes from our lord and all glory always goes to our heavenly father in all we do always understand when i always tell people with every song that i write for the glory of god with every song that i compose with every note that i write with every sermon that i write through the through the years through the last 
I would say out of the four plus decades of my life at least close upon more than two and a half more than two and a half decades of my life I've been penning down documenting penning down and documenting so many things not one of it is credited to my name the copyright doesn't go to my name not a single song that I write goes to my name there was a time where in all these things you know with the festivities and all these traditional things that I was partaking I used to always dawn on me to figure out in balancing it with the Bible I used to always say father if your Bible says this why do I see so much of this happening around me but the Lord was constantly constantly revealing much and at the same time asking me to guard so much within as well because there's so much happening in a world that we live in today and he was always guarding me because there was a time where I wanted to be able to publish most of what I've written I, I wanted to be able to always go and put out albums with the songs that I've wrote written but somehow every time I was going to be encouraged to do it when others were telling me to do it the Holy Spirit asked me to hold back and he always told me who are you doing this for do you really need fame is that what you're after or are you going to make sure that you finish this race that I placed you in to run to be able to do it for one purpose the Holy Spirit that's why he has been such an amazing guide to me that in everything with all reverence and honor the Holy Spirit is not some little thing that nudges me no the Holy Spirit is holy and I thank the Holy Spirit always to be able to pull me back to be able to pull me back to be able to guide me to be able to redirect me and I want to encourage you with that little story to be able to say always be guided seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit discern the Holy Spirit and he will always reveal everything that the Lord has said and Jesus has said through his living word hallelujah hallelujah see are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the lamb we've sung that hymnal we've I remember singing it even where my roots were brought out when I was part of the Ceylon Pentecostal mission and thank God for that amazing place and we used to sing that all the time as kids and I always tell people worship hymnals praise songs worship songs all these derivatives all these names matter not if worship is for the glory of God God is enthroned on the praises of his people it doesn't expire it's not the billboard charts it's not the uh, Rick D's top 40 it is not top charts it's not about Grammy Awards God's worship never expires it never grows old today we're living in a time where the youngsters are attracted to the beats and the times of modern music and modern music and styles have crept in to worship and it is that the underlying layer which is the guidance and not the Holy Spirit and I always always encourage those with discernment to move away from it to be able to walk away from it to be able to shut that volume down because I shut it down a long time ago because it was very eerie when it always when I used to minister in it and it used to disturb the very spirit inside of me and the Holy Spirit and I was never led to be part of it and that's why constantly the Lord always kept kept asking me to you know hold back hold back see there's a refreshing when you spend time in the Holy Spirit and understand when we cleanse ourselves daily understand that it's not just cleansing ourselves and going out there and sacrificing a lamb and then washing yourself with the lamb's blood oh no <laughs> you need to understand the spiritual concept of it see the death of the lamb didn't only save the Israelites from God's judgment it also provided a mighty deliverance from them in the morning they would begin their exodus 
out of slavery in Egypt. See, it goes on to say, Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire, with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its heads, its head with its legs and its entire entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire, and thus you shall eat it. With a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, so you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, as it says in Exodus 12, 8 to 11. In Psalms 34, verse 8 says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Our whole understanding when we read and study scripture in the life of Christ is about how we can personally experience Jesus in our lives. The fact that the lamb of the lamb was roasted in fire speaks of the suffering that Jesus was to endure and endured. In 1 Peter 2, 2 to 3 it says, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Do you need refreshing in your life? Drink the milk of the word. Feast on Jesus. Take in everything. That's why even when I worship, I always say, Father, let there be more of you and less of me. I want all of what you have, not some. I don't want to have some of my flavor and a bit of your flavor and so on. I say, I want it all, Father. Nullify me. Nourish me with your strength. Nourish me with your word. Nourish me with all information. I want to plug in to you. I want to tap into you so that you can reveal things that you have day and night. See, the Passover is a memorial of what God did. So this day you shall be, so this day shall be to you a memorial. It says in the book of Exodus chapter 12, 14 to 15. And you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations to this day. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses. God wants us to get the leaven out, the leaven of the Pharisees, Sadducees and Herod. It will come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord will give you, just as he promised that you shall keep this service. And it shall be when your children say to you, What do you mean by this service? That you shall say, It is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord. who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our households. So the people bowed their heads and worshipped. Hallelujah. As it says in Exodus 12, 25 to 27. See, to many parents who don't, dis who don't really I love that children according to God's ways, who don't teach their children according to God's ways, need to disciple their children, to teach them God's word and his ways. Praying for your children, teaching them God's word and his ways. We're living in times where the millennial generation, so to speak, have no understanding of most of these things because They've caught up in a world that is rapidly moving, that is rapidly expanding, that is rapidly changing, just like it is globally. And it's not about just Sunday service. It's not about all these things because much is going to change. Much has already changed. 
and some are still holding on to the technologies of Zoom and many things to still do the same traditions, same structures of a Sunday service. That's not going to cut it. See, we need to understand for this, we need to stand to preach and teach God's word day and night, night and day. Know that it's not our study knowledge that gets us the grace and favor to reveal that truth. But our availability, transparency, consistency and our humbleness that allows God to give platforms for us to minister to God's people, to one another, because it's not an opportunity for us to make ourselves known or famous, but to unitedly come to give glory to our Maker, who is calling us, each, each of us by name, and to us who have heard His voice, to have daily spent time in His Word, to be able to teach of the same, not to elevate ourselves, but to separate ourselves of the world, to teach and preach the only word that is not ours, but that of our Lord's. Understand that Jesus is the Passover lamb. It says they came the day, then came the day of unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. In the book of Luke, chapter 22, verses 70 to 20. I want to quickly go through that. And it says, And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat. So they said to him, Where do you want us to prepare? And he said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house which he, when he enters. Then you shall say to the master of the house, the teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large furnished upper room. There make ready. So they went and found it, just as he said to them, and they prepared the Passover. When the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Hallelujah. Then he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, it goes on in verse 16, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it amongst. Hallelujah. He said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, he gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. See, when we came to the Lord's table for communion on the first Sunday, just past, of the month, it was a memorial of the subst substitutionary sacrifice, of the substitutionary sac sacrifice, beg your pardon, that Jesus made for us. Just as the Israelites had to personally apply the blood to their doors, so too must we apply the blood of Jesus to our lives. We don't go applying blood around our doorposts. Many have said this, but we need to understand. It's not just about someone sharing it, but we need to understand it. How do we do that? By trusting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
and the penalty for our sin is death. However, Jesus shed, Jesus shed his blood and took our punishment so we could be forgiven. Hallelujah. We need to understand that in times like this, as we go through this Passover season and as we come into even in our spirit being to be able to understand what Jesus did when he was betrayed with every bit of strength that he had but as human as he was that betrayal we couldn't fathom to understand what he was going through but that very thing that he did over the next few days what he was to endure was unimaginable to feel so alone to feel abandoned to feel betrayed but he was always ready to fulfill that purpose on yours and my behalf it is valid to this day you know I've said this before even during worship Jesus when he was crucified on Calvary on that mountain top on Golgotha he didn't sacrifice his life for the just the few people that gathered on that hill it didn't expire 2000 plus years ago it is valid to this day his sacrifice is valid for you and I he paid a price he gave up his life for you and I for something significant so that you and I will come to understand our life's meaning something great far beyond this earthly riches earthly ambitions earthly way of life and we need to come to understand that it's not just babble it's not just some jargon it is not something that was written x number of years ago and it doesn't apply to me some say but i want to encourage you and invite you and to let you know that jesus died for us all not for some he died for us all he paved the way for us all and i want to tell you that no matter where you've been no matter how far you've been running even if you have heard the story of the bible the life of jesus even if you were not born into faith i encourage and invite you to let you know that god almighty hashem loves you he is for you not against you he has always been waiting just like the prodigal son the father waiting with arms wide open waiting for that day where you will turn to him and i tell you that he loves you he will never forsake you nor leave you even when you feel that you've been abandoned even with all the things that you may have been going through and many things that many one of your loved ones may not even know part of the journey of your life you may never have spoken to anyone but i encourage you to at this time be able to surrender your heart just be able to surrender your heart and let him know that you just want to be able to hear from him that you just want to be able to connect to him Loving Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for your love. 
Thank you, Father, for always being there for us, even though we may not always see it. Thank you, Jesus, for that ultimate price that you paid, the greatest sacrifice that no human being on this earth can ever fathom to understand. No matter what we may have gone through, no matter what we have even witnessed, nothing could come close to the sacrifice and what you endured on the journey that you paved before you were crucified. And the ultimate price from that to greatest victory that you rose, that you died, and on the third day that you rose again, And before you ascended, you left us a helper, the greatest helper that we could ever need in our hour of need, in time of need. We invite you, O Holy Spirit, every day, even for those of us who've been walking day and night, night and day, spending time in your word, whether be worshipping, whether whatever we've been doing, we want to invite you once again into our hearts surrendering every thought, surrendering every traditional way, surrendering everything we've been doing on a day-to-day -day basis, monthly basis, every structure that we've been doing, every plan that we've been doing, year in, year out, planning for things, halls to book, programs to run, when all that has been brought to a complete standstill, Father. We want to focus our eyes and our minds and our hearts on you and you alone. And Father, right now I pray, Father Lord, even for those that are seeking for answers, let them know that you are there for them. Trusting and believing that your hands and your hedge of protection will constantly be over them. And we in this time trust and believe, Father, no matter we may not understand all the things that are happening around us, but we pray, Father, to strengthen our hearts, to open the eyes of our hearts, to help us to discern your Holy Spirit. And I pray for those that are volunteering, for the, for the ones that are in the front lines from the medical services to the governments that are making decisions, to the forces that are standing out there in guard to be able to help, to be able to volunteer, to assist. For all the other volunteers as well, Father Lord, I pray that they will not give up hope that in everything that they are sacrificing, that they will be blessed, that they will be strengthened, and in connecting, that they will also come to realize that it is you that is their strength, that it is you that will give them. And through this all, Father Lord, that we will come to worship you, that we will always be on our knees to worship you, Father, that the whole world will trust and believe that you are king, that you are the Alpha, the Omega. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. That we will trust in you and we will continue to keep our faith and our hope in your word. And we will daily, Lord, spend time in you and in your word, preparing the way before your soon return, Lord. And we surrender it all, Father Lord, trusting and believing that you make all things work together for our good. In Jesus' matchless, mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Koraba Sharara, Hallelujah. Amen, Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, I just say that God's Shalom be upon your home and your families. And until we meet again, may God guide you through his Holy Spirit and that Jesus be the center of your household, your thoughts and everything that you do in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.